Hello, I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. And today I'm really delighted to be doing a collaboration with Frugal Joe, Claire from Claire's Journey and Tess from, I never remember Tess's uh, name, Food, Finance and Frugal Living, that's it, her channel name. Um, all very good frugal YouTubers. If you haven't seen their channels, do go and check them out and subscribe. I'll leave the links below. Um, and today we thought we would do a collaboration on eating really cheaply, but eating well and cheaply. So we're, we're looking, we challenged ourselves to create some meals that cost no more than a pound a portion, some good healthy meals and hopefully we'll give you some ideas and inspiration and maybe you'll want to copy some of the recipes that we do. So do go and check them out. As I say, give us all the thumbs up and do subscribe to everyone's channel. The other person that couldn't take part in this collaboration today is Jane, frugal queen in France. So she couldn't do this one. She did want to, but she couldn't. So she'll probably join in another one, but do check her out too. You probably know her already, but if you don't, go and give her a, a look. Right then, so without further ado, what I've decided to do is a couple of two chicken recipes actually, and one with minced beef. So I'll show you what I'm planning to do. I've decided to go for a kind of spicy chicken wings, chicken wings being quite a cheap sort of meat, with a homemade carrot salad and some homemade oven chips. And I'm going to do some cottage pies. Now, they're not that out of the ordinary, but I'm batch cooking and I'm kind of padding them out a little bit with lots of vegetables and lentils. Um, and also a kind of Spanish chicken dish. It is just something that I invented, but it's kind of based on things that I've cooked in the past that were recipes, I'm sure. So um, that's also using chicken thighs rather than chicken breast, which is rather expensive. So that's what I'm going to do. And I have price them up. I've kind of costed them out, but it is a bit vague in places because I've used things like bits of spices and just the odd onion and things like that. And it's quite hard to very, very accurately cost those out. Sorry, the dog's barking. It kind of depends on where you shop and the kind of produce that you buy. So I tend to shop in Lidl and Aldi. Occasionally I will buy from a market vegetables and fruit. Um, I also occasionally shop in Asda and sometimes Iceland. So I did buy the chicken thighs for my recipe from Iceland this time as they were really quite inexpensive. Um, I avoid any kind of branded items. I go for wonky vegetables wherever I can. I go for supermarket own brands or the Lidl and Aldi own brands wherever possible. And this keeps the price down. Um, I buy as large a pack as I'm going to use of things because, again, it tends to then be less expensive. Um, what I would say about the costings is that I've kind of worked out roughly on the, the weight um, and what I think I paid for them. So I do keep my receipts for my budget book. So I've had a look through some of the receipts. I've had a look on the Aldi website as well, just to kind of give me an idea. And I have had a stab in the dark, really, for things like where I've used salt and pepper and paprika and mixed herbs and things like that, because it's very difficult to, to cost those very precisely. So hopefully it will be roughly around about the pound or under for each of my meals. One thing I would say about the chips that I, I made, the homemade chips, I tried to make them a more crispy sort of, give them a crispy coating. And I've seen that done, I think it was semolina. I haven't actually made it myself, but I think somebody else made it for me. Or maybe they did it on roast potatoes and it was very good. This used flour, ordinary plain flour and corn flour. And it was okay, but I wouldn't rush to do it again. So although it gave a nice crispy coating, it also, I couldn't quite get rid of the floury taste. And when you see me make it, you'll probably think I just put too much flour on it. And it's possible that was the problem. I think possibly if I'd cooked them slightly longer on a higher heat, they would have been better as well. But because I was cooking the chicken at the same time and I didn't want to have the oven on twice because obviously I'm trying to conserve energy, I didn't do them on as high a heat as the recipe suggested. So it could be that. So bear that in mind if you're going to try those and I will link the recipe in the description box below as well. Okay, so without further ado, here is what I made. Three meals for less, well quite a lot less some in some cases than one pound per person. 
So this is a super cheap and easy meal. It's not a heavy meal, but what I'll do is make some homemade chips to go alongside. Um, I've got a kilogram of chicken wings. Um, the recipe calls for eight. There are actually 11 in here. Um, they cost £1.75 from Aldi, although it varies. You know, you can get bigger packs and probably get, even get them even cheaper than that. And chicken wings are often overlooked. They're actually really nice if you put a good marinade on them. And this is an old recipe from Ainsley Harriet, actually, that I've I printed out years ago and just always use it now. It's just a really nice, easy recipe. Um, it requires one onion, two cloves of garlic, eight chicken wings, as I say, but I'm using 11 because I may as well use them all up. Um, some Tabasco, Worcester sauce, mustard of some sort. The one I've got here is Dijon, um, some runny honey and some ketchup. So it's a really easy, easy recipe to make. Okay, so I'm sizzling the onions and the garlic, just softening those for five minutes. And then I'm going to add the ingredients for the marinade. So I'm using two tablespoons of runny honey. Lovely. <laughs> Two tablespoons of that. Clear honey it has to be really, you can't really do it with the set stuff. And then four tablespoons of ketchup. I just got this cheap one, 57 pence it cost from, I think Bramwell's is Aldi, isn't it? One, two, three, four, so four of those. And then Worcester sauce, we also want four tablespoons of Worcester sauce. I don't buy the actual proper Worcester Liam Perrin stuff because this is cheaper. <laughs> don't bother with branded stuff most of the time. So it's one, two, three, four of Worcester sauce. And then we want mustard it's like the recipe actually calls for english mustard but you know i've got dijon mustard i prefer it actually we do have some english mustard but i'm going to use this it's been hanging around longer i want two of these so i guess if you like it slightly kind of spicier english mustard would be the thing isn't it so i have to use a different recipe now it's about a teaspoon isn't it it's mustard And then the last ingredient of the liquid saw anyway is tobacco. So two teaspoons of Tabasco rather, not tobacco, did I say tobacco? Tabasco. Let's give this a bit of a shake actually. It's been sitting in the fridge a while. Oh, wrong one. It's not gonna work. Where's the lid gone? Oh, there it is. <laughs> give it a good shake. And then two teaspoons of that. I guess again, if you like it really hot, you could put a few more than two in. Just, uh, so it doesn't look very promising, but it smells quite nice. And then finally, we want the onions and the garlic. Smell that all together. It. this will melt everything else so it's just a it's probably slightly too browned actually but it shouldn't really be as brown as that it's fine it's cut very fine chopped up very small i don't really eat a lot of onions so i've only used half an onion the recipe calls for a whole onion okay mix it all together so that's your marinade and you can actually use this on chicken thighs or any other sorts of meat, maybe a bit of pork, it might look be quite nice on, it's quite nice for a barbecue. So it's tried and tested, I really like this. All we need to do now is dip these in some seasoned flour, which I've got here, um, and then coat them and brush them with this. So onto that step. 
Okay. Do you want to be fairly generous with the, the amount you put on? You can brush this on if you've got a good pastry brush. I have got one actually that's here, but um, it's dying and it keeps falling off. So I don't know if it's going to work. Let's try it. Well, yes, it does give a better coverage actually. It's probably better to use a, a brush of some sort. I think I need a new one of those though. I could just perhaps save the, this one for this job. Oh God, I'm so candid. Okay, so I've oiled, more or less like that. I've oiled this uh, baking tray. I'm just placing them on there. Let's try another one. So these are good for kids, you know. Kids like picky things like this. I actually like picky things like this as well. And they're very, as I say, very inexpensive. They're nice if you're doing a buffet or a party or something. Um, tonight we're having them just for our dinner. And um, so sometimes I do them with it like a savoury rice. I think tonight I'm going to do some homemade chips. I think that'll be the a good option and normally I'd do a green salad we don't have any green salad so I'm probably going to do just some sweet corn or something with these you know just make the best of what you've got really you know it would be nice to have a salad but I'm not about to whiz down the shop and buy a bag of salad or anything like that and um, sometimes I just grate up a carrot and I've got some chives in the garden and I will just make it like a winter carrot salad which I think I've actually done on one of my videos before um, it's very cheap. Carrots are very inexpensive. So that's another option. Maybe also a can of uh, sweet corn with it. Cold sweet corn. I could have a bit more on it. There we go. Getting there. So here we have them all done. And even though the recipe said it covered eight, I did make it stretch to the 11. Um, the last few didn't have quite so much on them, but I think that's that's OK. It's pretty generous normally. I normally have some left over. So they'll go in the oven for 30 minutes. I'm not going to put them on yet. So I'm obviously going to put more than one thing in the oven at the same time. So I shall do my homemade oven chips at the same time, which also take about 30 minutes, depending on how chunky I make them. Um, if there weren't so many of these, I would consider doing them in my air fryer. But um, I've got to have the oven on. I can't fit everything in the air fryer anyway. So. Um, that's the next thing to do and then I shall make a little salad to go with it. Moving on to the chips, my homemade oven chips. I'm just parboiling the potatoes. I made them quite chunky, um, as you can see. Parboiling them for just three or four minutes once they come to the boil. I have put boiling water in there, but it's not come to boil yet. And then I'm going to try coating them in some flour. So um, I'm using a BBC Good Food recipe to do this. I've not done it before, so I don't know how it's going to work out, but it seems quite a nice idea. It makes it nice and crispy, apparently. So um, I'm mixing ordinary flour with corn flour, um, half a teaspoon of baking powder, just going in, uh, a good teaspoon of salt, That's just plain table salt, nothing special. And, um, well, the recipe says cayenne pepper, but I don't have any cayenne pepper. So, and anyway, I quite like turmeric, turmeric, and I think it's really good for you. And I've got quite a lot of it, so I'm shoving a bit of turmeric in that. I quite often sprinkle this on top of um, chips when I do them in the air fryer. Um, and I'm going to, when they, then they're parboiled and cooled a bit, I will uh, mix them in that. And then they'll go in the oven with some oil. Do this in the food processor but it doesn't take that long to break it by hand and then i just end up eating all the ends in the food processor they go round and round and never quite get go in there i've used 400 grams of carrot although i've probably eaten 100 grams <laughs> maybe not hands now. Oh. 
and I'll snip some um, chives into here in a minute, but I need to go and get them from the garden. So in the meantime, I'm just going to make this dressing. I should use a tablespoon, but my tablespoon is now in the dishwasher, but that's, that's fine. I'm going to use this. So I'm going to use three dessert spoons of olive oil. Can you see this, can you? It's place. Just mix it in a mug. This is just stuff that I could buy from Aldi or Lidl. That one came from Lidl, actually, I think. I've got this um, apple cider vinegar. It just happens to be an organic one, but I think, again, it probably just came from Aldi. And I only need one of that. I'm using the Dijon mustard again. That it needed using. I managed to use it twice in one meal. Um, just a half a teaspoon is fine of mustard. You could use mustard powder if you have it, as long as you make sure it's mixed in properly. A very simple vinaigrette and some salt and freshly ground pepper. And just mix it all together. So it's a very simple vinaigrette. It's a lot cheaper than buying lots of salad dressing, so and I do like this one. It's particularly nice in this salad. I don't know why, but it's, I think it's another salad as well. But it's particularly nice in this carrot salad, which, as I say, I do a lot. Sometimes I do this with like spring onion tops. Sometimes I do it with just carrots if I've got nothing else. Sometimes I'll tip some sweet corn in there. But it's the original recipe was supposed to have chives in it. You literally just pour that all over. Around. This will last for, this won't get eaten tonight by just the two of us. This is probably about four portions, really. Give it a bit of mix. I'll mix it a bit more in a minute when I've got the uh, the chives, which I'm just going to go and get now. Here we are, just got a few straight from the garden. They're not very thick and chunky because it's March. They've just been sitting out there all winter. But this, I've got a very oniony taste. I think they're actually something called garlic chives, these, if I remember rightly. With a bit of a garlicky flavour as well. Just had a nice little bit of green, really, don't they? A bit of colour. All of my kitchen scissors. That will do. I could probably do with a few more, but that, that will do. It's very wet out there and cold, and when I go out, Archie wants to come out with me, and then he gets very wet paws, and then I have to dry his paws, and that's a big battle. So I'm not going to go out there again. So there we have it. Winter carrot salad. So the chips are completely cool now, so I can handle them, and I'm just going to toss them in this flour mix. Well coated, maybe too well coated those ones. I've got some oil heating up in the oven, like roast potatoes really. It has to be really nice and hot to get these in. Be interesting to see how these turn out. Because it's only a little extra thing, just that just makes it a bit different, isn't it? So hopefully it'll work out. I mean, I've gone much cheaper than the actual recipe from BBC Good Food. There's used Maris Piper. I've just used cheapy Aldi ones. Um, and I wouldn't have done this recipe if I didn't already have the flowers. And, you know, basically what I need to do it. So that's the thing, isn't it? Keeping costs low because you're, just, you're using what you've got. And if you've got to go out and buy a lot of special ingredients, and they, which then sit in the cupboard and don't get used, ends up being quite expensive. So there's my chips. Just got to wait for the oven, to, the oil to heat up a bit and then I'll get them sizzling in. Okay, so putting in the oil, which is hot. It's not sizzling for some reason, but it is hot. in this tray. It's actually quite a big tray, but 
need to turn them all over anyway first. So you just basically coat them in the oil. And so on and so forth. So I'll get the rest done and get them in the oven. Oh, so the uh, chicken's looking good. It's going to turn it over. Give it another five minutes and then hopefully the chips will be ready as well. So here we are, we've got spicy chicken wings with homemade chips and winter carrot salad. Um, I've got three, I've given Justin four. There's plenty of the carrot salad left over, a few of the chips and another portion of the chicken. So I'd say it kind of makes at least three this recipe, potentially could stretch it to four. Tonight I'm cooking something really, really simple. So I've just fried up a bit of chicken, some chicken thighs. They're only tiny ones, so I've actually done three each rather than two each. Um, and in here I've put some peppers. They're really, I've got a really big bag from Home Bargains. They were really cheap. There were about eight of them in there for a pound. Um, and some celery, and you could add onion, but I haven't added onion. Some garlic. And all I'm gonna do is add some chopped tomatoes, mixed herbs, a spoonful of smoked paprika, because that just, I think that adds such a nice flavor. Some seasoning, um, I'm just trying to what else I might add. If it looks like it needs a bit more substance, I might stick in a can of mushrooms because I haven't got any fresh ones left. I'm going shopping tomorrow, so I'm using up what needs using. Um, but I'll see if it needs, looks like it needs a bit more substance when we come to it. And then I'm just going to serve that with rice. So it's a very, very simple, straightforward, no fuss sort of dinner. But the, the real ingredient, the good ingredient here is smoked paprika. And the other thing I'll probably put a glug in of is there's some red wine that Justin has got that he's not very keen on. And I've just been using it in cooking. So that will be quite nice in this to add a, a nice sort of winey depth of flavour but you, you wouldn't have to do that so it's really quite a cheap and cheerful sort of meal. I actually sowed some pepper seeds today. It would be lovely if I actually could grow some peppers for once. I've tried a few times and got little tiny tiny peppers. Um, if we get a good summer maybe I'll get better ones. So into the pan, place the tomatoes. I'm going to put just, I'm not measuring this, I'm not really measuring anything, I'm kind of making this up as I go along but I do this kind of thing quite a lot. Good glug of red wine. The other thing I'm going to add to it is a chicken stock cube. Um, I'm going to put some, just some of the dried mixed herbs in. So I'm doing this with one hand, a good spoonful of dried mixed herbs and a good spoonful of the smoked paprika. I love this. It's probably my favourite spice because it's just very mild but it just adds such a lovely smoky flavour to everything. I'll put salt and pepper in this as well in a moment and also a stock cube but for now then I'm just going to tip the chicken back in the pan to cook through. Um, I might need to add some water to this I'm going to see how it goes. If I had courgettes from the garden it's the sort of thing I would chuck in as well because it's kind of a Mediterranean-y sort of chicken sometimes I call it Spanish chicken um, it's that kind of Mediterranean feel to it lots of peppers and so courgettes would go quite well with that. The stock cube is in, just a little bit of water. Then I'm going to bring it to the boil and boil all the alcohol off. So we just have that nice sort of taste of alcohol. And put a lid on it and just leave it to cook for, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. I'll see, they're only tiny chicken thighs, these actually, they were frozen ones from Iceland. So probably 45 minutes is going to be perfectly adequate for this. The other thing I'll add right at the end to this, because they don't really need any cooking, just warming through, is some of these black olives 
just because I've got them. And again, it fits that kind of slightly Mediterranean feel. So it wouldn't be essential, but I've got them open, they need using, so I'm gonna add those too. So here we have it, a kind of Mediterranean Spanish chicken thing. <laughs> Call it what you want. Um, it's all ready to go to be served with some rice and maybe a green salad. So I'm going to do a bit of batch cooking this afternoon to save a bit of time and some money. I'm using some quite cheap mince to make a cottage pie. So this is only £2.40 for 500 grams um, because it's quite high fat. But since I did keto, I'm not doing keto at the moment, but I've um, come to realise that fat is not the problem. It's sugar. So I'm not, I don't worry about this. It's much cheaper than low fat mince. Um, and if it's too fatty, what I tend to do is fry it up first and then drain off some of the, the juices and put, or drain off some of the fat. But you do then lose some flavour as well. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm actually going to go with it. I only use about half the onions that other people might use for this amount because I can't really eat onions. I've started using them a bit because I found that not as bad, having not eaten them for maybe a year and a half, a couple of times I've tried them lately when we've done liver and onions and I haven't been too bad. So I'm reintroducing them, but I'm being a bit cautious. I use celery instead of onions. I'm using some chopped celery, some onions, some carrots. I'm using up that pepper because it needs using. You don't normally put that in a cottage pie, but, you know, needs must. And I want to use it up. I've got some hot beef stock there and um, Worcester sauce. This is ketchup that I bought because it was in a glass bottle and I liked that from Lidl, but I don't like it. It's too kind of wishy-washy and sweet. It doesn't taste of much. So I am not using it for ketchup. I'm using it as in place of tomato puree. It's not quite as tomato-y, so I'll use a little bit more. And then something that needs using as well is a swede that's been in the fridge a couple of weeks. So I'm going to use that alongside the potatoes for the potato topping. And then I'm also going to repurpose. We actually had a takeaway last night with some friends we haven't seen for ages. Um, so we budgeted a takeaway in and I kept the larger ones of these. So I'm going to actually make some mini cottage pies in those for the freezer. So um, I'll make, I'll try and put two portions worth in. I think two portions will fit in there. Um, and that'll be good. We'll have some ready meals when we want them. Oh, I forgot to mention my secret ingredient just to stretch the mince a little bit further is this can of green lentils. If that's been sitting in the cupboard a while, I'm going to use that and that'll stretch the mince a little bit. And both bubbling away nicely. There's probably more vegetables than you would have generally in a cottage pie. And certainly you wouldn't have had the peppers, but I quite like that. Lots more fibre and nutrition and less expense because things like onions and carrots are very cheap. I'll leave that to brown off and then I'll add the other ingredients. So I've added all my flavourings, just stirring in the lentils. Obviously it'd be cheaper to use cooked green and dried green lentils, but I had a can so using those, stir those into both, it smells really nice, it smells lovely, we've got the stock now, trying to distribute the stock between the two. to the boil and cook it all up a bit. I added some flour earlier as well just to thicken it a little bit. And then I'm going to go and peel the spuds. I haven't actually done that yet. Okay, so the foil takeaway things didn't work. They're not big enough for a two portion 
two person portion so i've put a one person portion in there because that'd be quite handy to have in the freezer the rest i'm just going to cook all together whilst the onion is on the oven rather is on i shall cook them all and then freeze them in portions because then they just need to be thawed and warmed up in the microwave so it would save on energy if i've actually cooked the whole lot in one go so the potatoes are on i should have done them earlier and this is what my smart meter looks like today so it's higher on the higher anyway i should say on the electricity and uh, not too high on the the gas it's been on just for half an hour this morning though and has just recently come on for the evening little splurge for hot water and heating although i'm not sure much to turn the heating off it's not actually cold um, and then I plan to just keep a note here of when I go to bed, what it was each day, just so I can see once the price cap has lifted and because I'm currently paying, I'm still on a, I was, I'm still on a protected amount. So it's not too horrendous at the moment. So it's going to be horrendous next month. So it'll be interesting to see. Well, you have to be a bit of a nerd to find that interesting, don't you? It's actually terrifying, so I'll keep an eye on it anyway. So obviously the gas is going to go up when I put, not the gas, the electricity rather is going to go up when I put the oven on because it's an electric oven. Oh, that's why the gas has gone up, actually. Not really hit by the heating. It's because I've had all of the pans going, haven't I, on the gas hob. So that's why, duh. Anyway, so anyway, so I'm waiting for potatoes and then I'll finish those off and stick them in the oven. Okay, batch cooking completed. I'm going to put some cheese just on the one we're going to have tonight because we both love a bit of melted cheese on our cottage pie. I know it's not traditional, but we both like it. Um, I reckon there's about 12 portions amongst this lot, I would say, so not too bad. Here we are, there's one all ready to go. I'm gonna have that with some broccoli. So now that you've seen all of the recipes, all three of them, all three meals anyway, I really hope that you might be inspired to make some of them and I hope you enjoy them. And as I say, please do go over and check out my fellow YouTubers who have been busy cooking and making nice, easy, cheap meals as well for you to watch. Um, so we should all go live at the same time, hopefully today, so you can see us all one after the other. So I hope you enjoy that. Do please leave comments and let us know what your nice frugal meals are and give me the thumbs up. But don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.